Gertrude says, so here lies the big question. How do I stay in this relationship and stay safe and up the ladder? Now, that's a whole separate issue beyond, like, if we had two parents that were on the same page, I think my thoughts here and whatever research you've done as well, like, there's a comprehensive, like, springboard here to get to the next step. But should I, how do I stay in the relationship? That's a whole separate question, right? If, like, if someone asked me this kind of question, what I'm thinking of is the question, how do I stay in the relationship? Or is the question, should I stay in the relationship? And I, I can't tell you the answer to either of those things. It's really up to, to you and, and anybody else. Um, if it's should, like, should I stay in the relationship? That's, that's really something you have to be very honest with yourself about. I don't, I can't tell you that. Um, but we have to be very honest with ourselves about our relationships we're in, friendships, marriages, whatever they are. And should I stay in this? Like that takes some brutal honesty. It's a tough, it's a tough question. Is it worth it? Uh, that, that's one thing you consider is the bad stuff, quote unquote, bad stuff. Is the bad stuff something that you can live with or not? And if it is something, or if it's not something you can live with, how long can you put up with it? So if, if the bad stuff that we're involved in, and this isn't just about kids, this, this is like any anything that you're involved in. If you can't stand it, how long can you can you live like that? that I mean, that that's, I think it's pretty fundamental to it, is if, it, if you can't stand it, if you can't be in this relationship, how long are you willing to put up with it? Because you're in it, right? So how long are you to, willing to put up with it? That's if the question is, should I stay in a relationship? If the question is how, I think the first step to that question and to a lot of things in general is like, is to normalize some of what you're going through. And that might help soften the intensity of it. Like normalize what you're going through. Normalize the context of what you're in. Like normalize based on the past. Normalize based on what the kids need right now. Normalize means uh, you just take the look at the context and make sense of it. Just saying like, yeah, this makes sense. Normalize the fact that the feelings you have might be in conflict with um, with what's needed in the moment. But the feelings you have come from its own context. So just normalize that stuff. And also validate. It. This is how I feel. This is real. The feelings I have are real. They're happening right now. Or they happened yesterday. Or they will happen again. Just validate that. You do have these feelings and they are real. So normalizing and validating. I think can just kind of soften the intensity of of whatever situation that we're in that, that need that. She goes on to say, I feel horrible for expecting more from the kids than they are used to, but I know they are capable. They just aren't held to a higher standard. The fact is, these are not my kids and I have little control over the situation. I just like to not be anxious and keep myself and ultimately them down the ladder. I have had pretty bad anxiety over it for the last year or so. And I, and I, I, I get where this is coming from, this kind of sentiment, but we should expect more. I think it is okay. It, it's necessary for us parents to expect more out of our kids, no matter what our relationship is with them. And maybe that's expecting better grades or better attendance or better um, connection with our kids. We should expect more out of them and with ourselves as well. We should expect more of us, ourselves as parents. That, that doesn't mean that we're like beating ourselves up. That doesn't mean we're judging ourselves, judging them. It doesn't mean that we're going to yell at them for not living up to what we want out of them. No. It's just looking at where they're at and saying, just at least within ourselves, like, you did good within ourselves. I know you could do even better. And I'm going to challenge you to do so with lots of love and caring because I want the best out of you. I think it's a really good message for teachers to have of their students as well is you can do better. I mean, like the moment that we accept that this is the best they can do, they'll feel that. And I, I think that's disastrous. I think it's they will live up or down to our expectations of them. Now, I know parents can say that they want better for their kids out loud, but internally, they don't believe that. So we actually have to want better for our kids and believe it and feel it and to feel and to know that they can do better. No matter what it is, they can make improvements in whatever that is. And even if they're achieving at a high level, I think it's okay to expect them and to want for them to try new things and to, you know, build their zest for life and try new things out. That's, that's not, the, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Now, if you're communicating to them, like you're not doing good enough, do better. That That's different. But like, Hey, good job. Proud of you. So proud of you for that. Love you. What, what can we build on? What can we do next? Like, how can I support you when you, on, on your next endeavor? 
that's a hell of a lot different than, you know, you got an A minus. Why didn't you, why didn't you get an A? Or, um, or like, I, I just, you're not doing enough. Do better. Why can't you be more like your sibling? Like that's, those are way different things. And hopefully that makes sense. I, but basically I think it's always okay to expect more, to expect better, to hope for more, hope for better while being supportive, while being lovely, loving, while being compassionate and empathetic. I think those go hand in hand personally. And I think everybody in a child's life, I mentioned teachers, but everyone should be expecting this. We should all be expecting better of each other and communicating that to our kids that you can do better. I expect it of you and I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you along the way. So we can expect better for them while praising them for what they are accomplishing and without pressuring them to do better, but just more of like being curious with them and about what else could be done. You know, it's, it's more of like a joining in curiosity and support. It could sound like, I believe in you. I know you can do better. I know you can achieve whatever you put your mind to. I expect you to succeed in school. I expect you to succeed in life. It might sound like that. And these are conversations I've had with my kids, and I'm pretty point blank about what I expect out of them in a very healthy way, in my opinion, in a very healthy way. 